Hi, I'm Brett. This is another update on another engine that we're doing, and this one we've spoken about earlier on is the one with the closed deck block, the big heads, porting, valves, cams, and all that kind of stuff. So what we're going to show you now is what it looks like assembled. We've spoken about the turbo separately. It's got the Blausch turbo, which is the custom spec that we're now using on a lot of our upgrades. Just a couple of small things you'll notice. We haven't connected the um, oil line to the Blausch turbo yet, which, by the way, really, really important when you're fitting any turbo on your Subaru, make sure you use the original factory or the aftermarket turbo supplied restrictor. If you get that hole wrong, you can actually cause uh, lots of oil problems with your turbos, whether it damages the turbo or gets too much. But on this particular engine, you notice we don't have a lot of room down here. This um, oil supply line that comes out of the block and supplies the solenoid for the variable cam control also used to go around on this model down the side here and to the back of the block um, to supply the turbo. But when you get a bigger turbo, there's not enough mechanical room to get this hard line hose. So on this particular model head, there's actually another port on the back of the head that you can actually use for oil supply, which is what we're using, and which is why it's still loose, to connect to the turbo and then use a different model oil line out of the side of the head to supply the variable cam control because obviously this is um, oil pressure for the solenoid on the inlet manifold side. And this is why we've got it apart. I just want to show you here, the front of the engine's been assembled with the, you know, the cam belt and the tensions and idlers, but this is the variable cam control for the inlet and the variable cam control for the exhaust. And inside here is like a clockwork mechanism with a vein inside it. It's almost like a pump in reverse. And this solenoid here is controlled via the ECU, which this signal wire comes off the factory ECU. And it advances and retards the inlet. Now, the early model Subarus had variable cam inlet only. Later models like this one had exhaust as well. And these things, a lot of people underestimate variable cam control in Subarus, but it's an amazing way to get the car to come on boost earlier. So if anybody's telling you they don't need variable cam control, with all due respect, they haven't done enough tuning to understand how to take advantage of it. No matter how modified the engine is, unless it's some insane engine, this is a fantastic feature with a tuner with the right ability can really gain 300, 500 RPM increase in bottom end torque. But let's just talk about the engine as a whole. So um, EJ25, closed deck block, forged pistons, rods, crank has all been upgraded. Um, inside here, now it's a bit hard to see on the video, but down inside here, the ports have been machined out to as much as you possibly can. And one thing you've got to be conscious of when you're doing porting and polishing on these heads for Subaru is some of the galleries are very, very close to the um, uh, locations where the head studs go through and you end up not even a lot of material between the water jacket, the porting, and the um, the gallery for the head stud. So when you go to a 14 mil head stud, just be aware of that when you're getting your engine modified or your heads modified by your engine builder. So the other side, you may be wondering, because it's a split case, you've got a water jacket on one side, a water jacket on another, connected together by the aluminium crossover pipe, which then connects to the radiator and the cooling system. And these are all the part pipes at the back, which is part of the other um, heater core assembly and cooling. You'll see these pipes here and other parts as well, which connect to the um, other ancillary cooling system. And of course, down the bottom, we've got the HPC coated extractors, which were done by High Octane. And I must say, Ian Baker and his boys at High Octane here in Sydney do a fantastic job with their um, HPC coating. If you want that done, you can find the guys yourself. Really, really good way of looking after extractors. And you'll see under here is the Killer B, the new cast sump. And inside there is the better quality oil pickup and the windage tray because on early model, well, some of the early model Subarus, they have a notorious problem with the oil pickup breaking off and sucking air and then you do a big end bearing because you don't have reliable oil supply to the oil pump and then you do a damage to your big end bearing. So let's talk about the inlet manifold. And I get my cameraman to look, try and look inside here because normally inside there is what you would call an old school choke or a butterfly and there's not one there at all other than a ginormous hole. And, um, these are the tumble generator valves which Subaru put on the cars to help them um, pass uh, cold start emissions. Um, they're electronically controlled via butterfly through a factory ECU. They're a restriction from the high performance mod so you can take them out and bore them out and then delete the TGVs or you can buy the Process West ones which is a, a billet kit that bolts on but when we built this engine quite some time ago before this freshen up they weren't quite easily available. So. Let's talk about some other mods. We've got the big um, three inch silicon intake to the original factory air box, um, which is the part that goes under the inlet manifold here. Um, and of course that part there effectively sits there um, when the manifold goes down over the top. 
and we then got um, some new alloy billet rails because we want to run split fuel lines on this car so we'll have one side with the high flow injectors because this engine is going to be built to run E85 so you've got a 1300cc injector. Don't let anybody convince you you need bigger. A 1300cc injector is massive when you're talking about over 300 kilowatts running E85. Um, you go any bigger, the car's horrible to drive down low because you just can't drop down the injector duty cycle enough and you end up with all these flat spots in the tune which can't be adjusted out when you're running 98. So um, factory original STI inlet manifold and I just wanted to show you, it's a bit hard to see you, but these are the replacement valves. Now this, this engine had a damaged valve on one of the old ones. You can't see it, but this valve here is one mil oversize um, because these heads have got bigger valves. And you'd be staggered, that one millimetre bigger in overall diameter compared to that one is actually what makes a significant difference in the ability of the heads to flow a fair bit of grunt. Sooner or later, if you've got original factory size valves, there is a restriction in that head. You just can't mechanically flow enough um, gas through them and you start putting more and more boost in but you don't get the grunt you expect because you're approaching the flow capacity of the heads. Um, but last but not least you'll notice this profile here matches the profile here because this part here bolts onto the heads. Now what these do is go on top of here on either side and they insulate the heads from the inlet manifold because what you want to try and do is keep the inlet temperature as low as possible but over a period of time, even with the factory gaskets, you get transfer of heat and radiated heat onto the alloy inlet manifold, which then becomes a, a heat soak, which then of course starts heating up the inlet charge to the engine. These thermal intake barriers from Cosworth are pretty good design. They're not that thick. You'll be careful using some of these aftermarket ones. If they're too thick, as the manifold rises up, the angle of the injector, as it pokes through this hole here, so the injector, it's a bit hard to show you, I'll put those parts there, but effectively it sits like that and the spray of the injector comes out that hole there and fires down the throat of the inlet manifold on either side. Now as the manifold raises up with these parts, the angle changes and you end up with injector firing into the throat in the wrong place and it actually stuffs up the tune of the car. So if you're doing these types of... Um, thermal gaskets, try and pick the thinnest one as you can get. So we'll do another video update when this engine gets footed back in the car and we'll put something on the dyno um, and um, of course you can get some more technical specs off our website and I hope this info has helped you more. Check out our other video where we talk about what the closed decking looks like but for now no matter where you are in the world, I'm Brett Middleton, thanks for watching.